All right, so this will be that video that you've been asking for. I'm sorry, man, I totally forgot. But um, basically, what we're wanting to do is I've been me I've been meaning to make this bullet for a while anyway because it shoots really good out of my Hornet. Basically, it's a uh, 62 grain um, pull down bullet. So the 62 grain pull down bullet right here is a uh, a sharp profile flat base which making this it's got a little bit of a boat tail on it but with this one won't uh, what's going to happen is when you make this cutter right here is uh, it's not going to have a base that you want on it so what you got to do is you've got to make this thing I'm just going to use this other end because this piece of uh, steel I've got here is pretty much the you can see how much I actually had to take off of it which was not very much to make this cutter so that's a 224 or 226 it's a little bit over 223 diameter you're you got to make your uh, mole to be over size because you want to be able to size them down and this one as you can see is oversized it's 224 225 so that's what you're wanting that's your first step is you got to get you a piece of, of good metal and uh, the and the profile of the bullet you're wanting to make so what we'll do is is I'll try not to make this a lengthy video I'll piece them all together what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it turned down basically just the whole length of however long I need this I'm going to turn it down for the full length to the outer diameter of the bullet and then I'll get back with you okay, I want to show you the first step here is I chucked it up in my lathe I got my bullet and I laid it up here and basically made a mark I'm going to make a mark on the, on the piece of metal the length of the bullet I want and all I'm going to do for that is I just brought the tool back, laid this up here, holding it flush on the end until I got it where I want it, like so. I'm just going to come in with the tool and basically make, draw me a line on it because I can go pretty deep. I'm just going to draw me a line with the tool as it's spinning. So let me make a couple more double checks and I'll show you that part. Okay, I'm fairly certain that's where I want it. So I'm just going to turn it on. I have to be very fast for this. And you run it in. And you draw a line. That's all you do. So this is noteworthy here. This will clear up. There we go. So once you take your measurement here, you see the dial is reading two. Come on, clear up. Two fifty-eight, two fifty-nine, something like that. So we only need to take off um, about. 40 thousandths if that 35 thousandths so each rotation on this dial is going to be that's going to be two sided so you're going to have to double that number at least that's the way mine's set up so if I turn this and go in 35 thousandths I'm actually going to be taking 70 thousandths so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to touch it up I'm going to divide the number in half 35 and I'm going to just kind of bump it up and check it with the calipers and it's very time consuming until you get it right then all you got to do is profile the bullet and it's really not that difficult okay that only took about two cuts because I've I done it really nice now it's kind of got a little bit of a a grain to it because I was doing it fast so what I'm going to do is take a file I'm going to turn it on and I left it it's a couple of thousandths large right now and I'm just going to kind of bust the edges down a little bit and make it nice and smooth until I get it. I'm probably going to go ahead and knock this 
this bark edge off because I'm going to have to turn this to the radius of the bullet and I'll show you how to check that in just a second. Okay now on this bullet wherever I laid it um, anyway the only critical part on this bullet is going to be where your O give or your point turns back into flat and that's where your critical diameter is going to be. Now it's going to need to be centered of course so that you can get a good um, uh, cut on it but that's pretty much the only part you really have to worry about so you get one of these this is a, basically a pro uh, machinist protractor and it'll give you your angle of your bullet and I'm right at 20 degrees is what this little guy right here is is 20 degrees from point to end now you don't want this little bitty let me see if I can get it to clear up on it. Pull it away. Alright, that little bitty point right there, when you pour lead, that you're going to have to have that little fatter because it won't fill up that little bitty point. Uh, you'll get an air gap in the bottom of it. So you're going to have to have, like this was a sharp bullet. It's a 30 cal. Actually, it's that bullet right there. But, um, you see it's basically have a polymer tip on it so what I done was I measured it right to where the polymer tip would stop and then I left it flat so that flat is going to be your your tips actually going to come out of your drill bit when you run it down in there down into your mold but that's where your tips going to come to and then you you're going to basically cut this angle all right so basically this is what you end up with when you get it done is if you lay the bullet up there beside it, you got your flat just like you would on the bullet, you got your tip, and your cantler is pretty much the end of where your flat is, or your uh, radius is, because that's where you crimp it, it's just a little bit in front of it. If you look, that's what we got here, it stops at the cantler. So pretty much, the machining part of this is done, because the only part that's critical is this surface right here and we are that gum it I moved it can't look through the camera and do this we are right on the money of where we want to be 224 okay so now all you got to do chuck it up mill it off Okay, I forgot one key part before you start is you want to make sure and run a run a dial indicator down your part and make sure it's in here level, which we are. It's it's there. It just uh it's a little time consuming to get that part. But once you get that, then you're ready to mill. Okay, the way I mill these is bins are I just get a mill bit, an end mill bit, that is this a little bit bigger than the diameter of the shaft that I'm wanting to mill and then I lock my travel forward to back once I get it centered and then I just mill this way and what I know is is I know right back here that my diameter is 224 all right or 225 so I divide that in half and periodically I'll take a pair of calipers and I'll check it and I'm trying to get it down to one be one one twelve or something like that and uh, then I know I'm exactly half in half just show you a few brush strokes with it I'm doing is I'm coming down a few thousands coming up to that spot I got coming back down a little bit more now that ends not very critical because you can make a, a cleanup cut on the right up next to the chuck so you're just doing this to get half and two
And a good indicator that you're half in two is that that, that point will be split in half. Okay, that is half in two. It is one twelve. So that's half in two. Now all we got to do is clean up that that cut right there, where that it's like a half moon where you've been running into it. You just want to flatten that off. And all you do is leave it set where it is, come into it, and go back and forth. So you can unlock your your end to front travel and go side to side. So you got that travel unlocked. Just take and come into it. You get up close to it. And go back and forth until you get down to where you need to be. too much here that really don't matter because all you're going to have is a little bit of a relief and you're going to measure how much you go down in all right that part's done so what we have is we have a finished cutter we'll go ahead and pull this thing out and i just made it on the other end of my other cutter there it is. Take and kind of clean that point up a little bit so it's more flat like that. And just take a belt sander and touch it and it'll pretty much do that. But it's exactly half and half there according to the measurements. And that is a complete cutter. Now all you got to do is uh, make your square blocks. You're going to drill down into the block until this will be totally buried and it'll be right where that tip's at you put this in your mill go into it easy you might want to drill a relief cut here kind of another step to the depth of your flats and then all you're going to do is use this to basically cut the cone is all you're going to do all right i hope that helps